So we're here today with Paula Martin, one of our Arizona drag racing legends, and a fantastic story about, you know, the in the viewpoint of actually being a female driver in in a, in a man's sport, uh, but some good vision about racing in, in general, and uh, and a great background. And, and she, uh, and she's a. We'll let her tell the story. So where are you from? From Dallas, Texas, just a small town north of Dallas. In little farm ranch community. When did you feel the need for speed? How did you, <laughs> how did you get, what was your first thing you realized you liked? I started with motorcycles. I had, I was into horses. Everybody, everybody in Texas is into horses. And um, I started a little business when I was 13 or 14 years old. And so I had to get around and bought a motorcycle and had a lot of fun with that. And then when I went away to college, that kind of fell away. Um, and a couple of years into college, um, I started skydiving and had something like 43 jumps, I think. So. You needed to, you love the rush of. Extreme sports are extreme good. Extreme sports. Yeah. So where, where, where did you go to college? Arizona State. Well, I started at University of Texas <laughs> on a journalism scholarship and I lasted there uh, a semester before I did a really good job of flunking myself out. <laughs> So you went away to school. I went away to school. So mm -hmm. you went from the hook 'em horns to the the, the devil. To the devil. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Quite, I did. quite the transition. So, you 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 came out here and did you continue? Did you do any jumping out here or did you? All the jumping was out here. Yeah, I was part of the Sun Devil skydiving team, and um, I was going to school, also working full time, and. At that point, I think it was my, my sophomore year, I met my husband, we got married, and he didn't, he saw no reason to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Well, I was gonna question you <laughs> about that as well. But yeah, they were all really good airplanes. Um, uh, and so he was into circle boat racing and water speed well, skiing. So on, the, on, the, on the parachute thing, so mm -hmm. you're going to school, and were you walking through the, <laughs> down the, the sidewalk, and there's a bulletin board saying, <laughs> <laughs> jumpers needed or how did you how did you get That's I mean, an interesting what did you concept. do to that um i was living in an apartment a singles apartment complex and they had a special for 35 dollars or something like that that you could learn to jump out in the morning you know they'd go through the exercise with you and then that afternoon you would get three jumps and i thought well that's a smoking point. deal yeah and so um, went down to Casa Grande, and that was in the big blossom. The parachutes were the big blossoms. So you never re were really sure where you were going to land you're, with you're those. You were the passenger than the driver. You really were, yeah. I, I met a lot of cactus that way, actually. All of us did. It's kind of like a hot air balloon. Yeah. Kind of it, yeah. Once it land, it's going to land. Huh? Yeah, I think they have a little bit more control even than so those blossoms. So you, you did that, and you, you met your husband. Uh huh. And he said, What's "I'm not jumping. <laughs> yeah, I'm not jumping out of an airplane." So, w w and, he, and he was in involved with boats. Yeah, boats and water ski racing. Yeah. So, how did you transition? And because uh, obviously that was there must have been some excitement there for you or the. Well, I never water skied, and so uh, when I started, I really liked it, and I wanted something that we both could do. We didn't have a lot of spare time. Both of us were working, and I was working and going to school. And so uh, I just, I, and I was beginning to get kind of bored with the jumping. And so learned how to water ski. A year later, started competing and did that for 10, 11 years. And then as an offshoot of that, um, pulling skiers around, I started boat racing, circle boat racing. And in, in where did you, were you, remember your first race or when you actually, first time you did it competitively with Butterflies or any with the with the boats or with skiing with, with the boats just the oh yeah because no woman had gone there before and um, you raced against sometimes eleven other boats and you never knew what kind of driver that's kind of like the beginning of drag racing when there was no there weren't any rules about driving and so it it was wild it was really wild and I didn't want to flip the boat. Um, because everybody would know Paula flipped the boat, right. not somebody out there, one of the guys, it would be I flipped the boat. Um, and I never did. I got very lucky and I set goals for myself to be ranked nationally and, and, and eventually did for two or three years. 
did it take a while? Uh, I, I think one of the toughest questions from you know my viewpoint is just to understand being a female, obviously, and mm -hmm. what you're going through. But were you doing it because you, you, you were trying to prove a point as a female, or you just <laughs> think it's your competitive? You've talked to my brother, because uh, that's what my brother always said, because nobody in the family has ever done any kind of extreme sport or been involved in racing. Uh, I didn't. I did it because I liked it. Right. Uh, I've never tried to prove anything. I like competing, and I like, you know, I liked speed. And in the water speed skiing, we were running sometimes 100 miles an hour skiing, and the boat ran around to 110, and, and you had a changing race surface all the time, plus all the other competitors. So it was, it was, it was a physical sport, very physical sport. So you, you, you earned your, <laughs> your need for speed on water. I did. Did you ever do any drag boat racing, or was it all circle boat racing? All circle boats, yeah. Very so different, two different, very different right. sports, yeah. The drag boat racing, you probably look at those guys said they're crazy. And I did, uh, I, and I skied behind one of them uh, in an attempt to set a water ski record, and I think I ran 108 out at Firebird on the water out there. Wow. Yeah, that's fast. And that's not, you know, that boat's not going to turn real sharp at the other end. It's either, it's on and off and... It, it's on and off and a huge rooster tail, so you had to deal with that. And I think I was on a 230 or 40 foot rope. So you're way behind the... Not behind far enough, but no. yeah, it helped. <laughs> it just felt like, it felt more like a hurricane then. So, <laughs> how did you... Did, hey, Paula, we got this idea for you. Are you interested? <laughs> I mean, here, have another beer first. <laughs> Yeah. Have one more. Yeah. We want to talk to you about. It. Here, have another beer for you. <laughs> what, in your right mind, made you want to do that? Uh, to ski that fast? I mean, to go behind it. Yeah, I. You know, it made sense then, retrospectively, <laughs> sitting here talking about it. I'm going, yeah, you were nuts. Um, you know, I was, when you're surrounded by people who do that, it's like drag racing. When you're surrounded by people who go, you know, 280, 300 miles an hour, it's like it's not a big deal. So you're in the water, you hand it, you say, hey, hold my beer, I got this. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I didn't do a whole lot of that because <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> yeah, it was pretty scary stuff. But um, you, you definitely did it with a lot of respect, we know that. And, yeah. And the, it, so you did that, so did the boat racing, and then how did the idea of doing racing on <laughs> dry surface come about? Um, like I said, I had set goals for myself in those sports. And, and sometimes you just feel like it's over, it's done. I'm done with that part of my life, and, and that's what I did. Um, plus, both of those sports, especially water skiing, was very physical, and by then I had gotten busted up a lot. I had fractured my neck, pelvis, hurt an eye. It, it was a very physical sport. And so I thought, well, I'd be okay just riding horses and playing golf. And, about a year later, I got really cranky and tried to isolate why I was more cranky than usual, and it had to do with the fact I missed competition. You needed adrenaline. I did. The mm -hmm. rush of, of doing something. Absolutely. So you went drag racing. I did. And what year about what was this year? I didn't even go. I was listening to the time frames here, and, and I never even went to a drag race until the mid-80s. I was in my 30s. and. Um, I went to a funny car event, one of the night events, and I was so dazzled by it. I'd seen it on TV, but there's this, it, it's so different in person. And I thought, geez, that looks so scary. I, I probably need to do that. Um, and so I sold my race boat. Um, I had talked to Della Woods at the Fall Nationals, and she suggested Frank Holly's school. So I went down to his school. He only had top alcohol cars in and so the first car I got in was top, top alcohol funny car and liked it really well and had you been down the drag strip before you oh no you went there no we just you know we were naive and blind I don't say it's so naive I think you're focused <laughs> if you ask me but or a little bit crazy on top of it but yeah. naive is mm -hmm. not the word so you, you went to Frank Holly's school mm -hmm. And you know, as we know through the years, a lot of great people have gone through there. And mm -hmm. you, you, you graduated, and you said, "I really want to do that." Mm -hmm. uh, the things that people had warned me about with a funny car actually fit in a strange way with the boat racing because funny cars are physical 
and, and you do have to manage them, and they can be erratic. They can be all those bad things. But I was used to that was with boats. I, until I started going over 200, I really didn't feel as fast as I did in the boat going 110. Was that, that you had a, yeah, hit it at mm -hmm. that point. So you're driving between the candles now. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 uh, you, got, you built a funny car, you buy a funny car? How did you get the funny car? We bought a used funny car, a little Monza, and put uh, an injected, I think it was injected alcohol in it, and ran with the California Injected Funny Car Association for about, well, for the first year. And, and I mean, we were starting with basics, like how much air do you put in the rear tires? Uh, I was in line to, to make one of the first passes, and I think I was next to Virgil Hartman, or Richard, I can't remember. And, um, and I sort of looked at their rear slicks and mine, and I thought, geez, mine don't look quite right. <laughs> so I went over there and sort of nonchalantly, well, so how much you guys run it on this track and your <laughs> tires like, you know, you changed a lot. Um, I was running 11 or 12 and they were running six. I mean, it was like, I would have looked so like a cartoon character going down. Yours looked like the grape, theirs looked like the raisins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that association too was, everybody there was really nice, very really helpful, friendly. So that was my first orientation to it. And then the next year I bought a um, Bob Newberry car alcohol fighting and ran that for about six months and then converted that to fuel. So you, you started with Sifka, great, mm -hmm. great place to start. Uh, I'm sure boat racing was much the same, but your competitors are also your support group. If you had a question, you needed mm -hmm. help. You know, they were like, everybody's glad to help, which is one thing I love about drag racing. Absolutely. Um, you went from um, Sifka into a uh, blown alcohol mm -hmm. money car. Mm -hmm. And for six months, that was okay. Mm -hmm. And then you said, "We really need to make this go faster." Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we converted it, and I got my license in August in Phoenix. Nice. Yeah, it was. That's an extreme sport itself. Well, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was worse for the guys working on the car than it was me, but it was hard. Yeah, and. Um, Got it on a Friday and then finished the passes up on Saturday and then Ron Fossil signed me off and I raced him that night in a match race. That had to be something, another legend. You know, I, I think the world of Ron when um, shortly after that, like four, about four months after that, I had a major explosion, fireballed it and got burned. And until you've been burned, I don't think you have a concept of how bad it can be. And none of my friends had been. And any time I wanted to talk about it, all they wanted to say was, don't do it again. And so Ron would call me up once or twice a week and ask me how I was doing and tell me what I could expect from, you know, as you move through the process of healing. And Definitely a person that had been oh. some severe fires on his own. Oh, oh yeah. In fact, I called him Staple Butt for, uh, because he, he'd had so many, they finally had to just staple his butt on. Uh -huh. okay. Put it right here for now. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, great mentor, though. Absolutely. And you nice went through man. you went through the fire. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the, anything about it, or does your mind oh. kind of go blank on it? Or oh no, I those things you remember. Well, unless you just totally knocked yourself out. Um, and I didn't hit anything, so there was no knocking out. It was three quarter track engine exploded, blew the body off, fireballs. Uh, when it blew the body, of course the parachutes burned off, um, braking system was damaged, fire bottles were damaged, so uh, very difficult to stop the car. And when I did get it stopped, the first track person there, I was still on fire, and the first track person there, his fire extinguisher didn't work. So you see that panic in his eyes, and I'm still flaming, you know. and, and um, the cam locks, I had a problem that year and so did Don Gay Jr. with the cam locks because when there was intense heat put on them, they would not release. And so I was sitting there banging on it, trying to, to open it up to get out of the car and uh, couldn't until the safety safari got there and cut it. The, uh, so 
this is terrible. I mean, it's got to be like, mm -hmm. where am I? You know, what, what am I going to do? But you weren't even thinking about that. You're just thinking about surviving it at the point. Well, you know, I, I, after going to Holly School, I thought, <clears throat> regardless of what happened with the car, I'd, as long as I kept my head screwed on right, I'd be okay. And I carried that throughout the past, and, and I knew that I was going to damage my hand because the handbrake was on the right, and the majority of the flame was on the right, and I had to put it there, and I had to leave it there. Um, but I didn't, I, it's interesting, with third degree burns, once you burn the top layer of the skin, you don't feel anything, and the body does a really good job of shutting that area down. So at the end of it, I was horrified that it was on fire, but it was more of a, geez, I'm back here and I'm looking at myself on fire, but I wasn't feeling what, a lot of pain. Wait, what track were you at? Fire burned Perfect. right in front of everybody. So you got mm -hmm. to go to Maricopa County? I went, no, I went to, um, Tempe, okay. and they called in a plastic surgeon, and then it was, they actually let me go, and I went back to the track the next day, and I'm thinking, you know, I'd be bopping around thinking, what's the big deal? These guys are always telling me how bad burns are. Well, they're not bad until the lights come back on in your body, and that happened Monday about four o'clock in the morning. It's like, yeah, now I know what they're talking about. Yeah. So, you, 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 re you healed. Mm. Did you go back racing or was... I would have raced three or four months as soon as the doctor released me. Um, but we, uh, we, everything was gone. Mm -hmm. Every part that I owned, which wasn't a, wasn't a deep chest of parts, was gone. And so it took us about a year and a half to recuperate enough so we at least could start considering it. And about then, Johnny West was available to build a car and to crew on it. And we were very lucky I got him. Great mentor. Great, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing was, and I don't know if he knew this from the start, but he was working with two people on the crew that knew very little about what we were doing, and a rookie driver. And I remember coming back from one of the first passes I made with him, and he goes, now you sit up in front with me so we can talk about the pass. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, he said, so how was it at the 3.30? <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, I don't remember the 3.30. <laughs> and then he said, well, how about, you know, three-quarter track? How did, was it still pulling? And, and uh, you know, the only thing I could think of was, Johnny, it, it pulled the whole way. That was the fastest I've ever gone. <laughs> I had no relevance. And so I think he kind of said about um, letting me know that, that I wasn't just there for the ride that I needed to give feedback about the pass, and then he started teaching me how to do that. So he, he was trying to get you to slow the, the pass was gonna be so quick no matter what, but he, he was trying to get you to slow it down in your mind to. Yeah, to, it, to pay attention that you, you know, you're so wild by everything, and uh, at least I was, and you know, I'm, I'm just sitting there smiling because I got to go really fast, and he's going, you know, you have a job. <laughs> I think you talked a lot of the, the, the great drivers do it for a long time in their mind if they were to script a, a pass in a, in a funny car, a real f quick pass, mm -hmm. the script would probably take about four minutes to read. Mm -hmm. And it happened in such a short time. Oh yeah. So he was he was, he was helping you Absolutely. the next step. And it feels that way now. And, and he, you know, there are things, subtle things that we could do back then, like holding the brake from off the starting line or down the track. Um, Johnny, as most people know, is a tough, I mean, he's blunt and <laughs> he's clear about his communications. And his that was, are weak. Yeah, and <laughs> that was a good thing. That was a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you got some great you know, ins you know, guidance from him. Mm -hmm. How long did you continue to race? Um, we raced with Johnny and he was able to get a, a marketing partner for the end of the year. And so he bought the car and he went off on his, you know, his own path. And I sat and tried to figure out what we were gonna do at that point. Um, the next year, I think I ran two or three races with the uh, Chicago Trapper, Terry Joyce car. And still, it was on and off of being able to race. Um, and then, the next year, there was just no money at the Trapper deal, and so we struck a deal with Terry Joyce. We bring in this, you bring in that. We provide, because I'd been able to get a sponsor by then. And um, 
And so that worked fairly well. What didn't work was they had a series of not so good crew chiefs. And that makes all the difference in the world. Absolutely. When Simpson says, you know, Paul, you probably ought to start buying your fire boots in bulk. You know, <laughs> you know it's not been a good year. Yeah. No, those are, they're, they're not supposed to be expendable. They're supposed to be. I always remember the, the deal. Of, you know, I used to have a speed shop here in town. And uh, people come in and complain about the price of safety equipment. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's meant to be worn, but never used. Yeah. Yeah. You know, That's what and, you hope for. And if, you, if you're at the point where you need to use it, you'll pay me three times, five times oh, the yeah. cost. Well, and when you yeah. get, when you start getting as a driver, when you get start getting nonchalant, going, "Oh, geez, you know, my feet are on fire again," that's not a good thing. That's not something you want to just go, "Oh, my that's feet are not, on fire." That's <laughs> not normal. No. So you, what did you do? You know, I know you 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 race and then. So we when, raced. When, yeah. When did you stop racing that the funny car? We did match races on and off there for the last probably three years. I probably I was doing maybe five match races a year, and then in ninety six ninety seven I think was when I finally said unless we unless it will support itself we're not going to do this right. anymore and it's hard to make it support itself. I mean, everybody's race yeah. knows well, that. You kind of find the people who get the big support actually find a way to spend the money, mm -hmm. so they're still. And yeah. yeah, I had a great I had a great sponsor with Isaac Land System, but they sold the company, and when they did, they went off to do Formula One racing, mm -hmm. and so you really that it was at a point where you had to have a sponsor if you wanted to be at all competitive. And I was lucky because the last two or three races, I was able to get the late uh, Ron Collins, who I loved to death. He was, he was excellent what he did, and I wish I had got him earlier, because I think I could have, uh, I could uh, things would have gone better. Um, so you, you, and you, so we parked it. You parked the car, mm -hmm. and you 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 have a passion for horses still, and you have a passion for animals, mm -hmm. and you have a career. Did mm -hmm. and yeah. so. I know that, you know, I don't know that all that I, I really, I'm not saying this, I'm questioning you, mm -hmm. did, you did you, I know you were, were involved in the healthcare system mm -hmm. in big time and, mm -hmm. and, and so you, did you move to California or were you working for a while, were you living in California for a while? I, I did, I lived over there for 14 or 15 years. Um, I got a divorce I think in 96 and uh, I had known Trip Shoemake for a long time and by then, I think he had been divorced quite a while, and I called him up to congratulate him on um, his uh, induction into the Arizona Hall of Fame. And so we started talking and ended up dating, and then we ended up being together for three years until he died. So and that had to be a fantastic part of your life. It was a lot of fun. I I, I didn't have any children, and he had Travis mm -hmm. at that point was uh, fairly young, and it was different. I was used to nieces and. Here's a boy in the house, but I truly enjoyed it. It was fun. He uh, he kept your you know he kept passion for all the fun things going mm -hmm. for everybody. Mm -hmm. He's a, you know like I said they're definitely you know another guy that we shed a lot of tears on when we when we, when we mm -hmm. lost him along when we lost Mark Niver as well. Yeah. Um, but the um, you still have the passion. To, you still want to go racing. Mm -hmm. So here we are in. 2020, 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. an old friend is building an altered, and mm -hmm. you get a call? I got a call, and I had just recently, I was uh, director of neuropsychiatry at University of California in Orange County, and I had just left there, um, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do from there, whether I was going to continue to work, retire, whatever. And uh, yeah, a friend called up and said, hey, you want to you want to drive a, a fuel altered? And, and it took me like a nanosecond to say yes. Um, did you it, it, so? Did you really think about it, or did you just like? Oh no, I didn't mean to think about it. Oh no. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, drive a race car. Yep. Uh, I wanted to. Like yeah. the, the, the light after came 15 on, years. You grab the food. Let's go racing. Yeah. yeah after yeah. 15 years. Yeah. No problem. And uh, of course, then afterwards, I thought about it a little bit. So um, time went on. It was unclear whether that was going to come together or not. So I decided, well, I'm going to go down. I'll go back down and see Frank and get, go ahead and get my license again. And went down there on Friday, and someone had already asked me back east to drive their car on Saturday up at um, South Georgia Raceway. So we licensed on Friday, drove their car on Saturday, and then have driven 
two or three other diff for different reasons. One friend of mine, his arm was broken. He couldn't he couldn't do a shakedowns on his car. And so um, then last year I drove, last year and year before last, I drove Funny Car in the Funny Car Chaos, which is fun. It's outlaw Funny Cars. Um, and so then still remembering along the way that a great crew chief is everything. Absolutely. Okay. And the, you know, there's a set of rules and ways of doing things along that. And I just say I was spoiled, but especially with Johnny here, but yeah, because it'll give him a big head. But yeah, I was spoiled by how I was taught to do things. And you know, I'll pinch hit for some teams, but there were some that I wouldn't, and and some after I was there that I that I thought to myself, I this is not my scene. I need not to be here anymore. Dangerous. Fuel will get you. Does it still feel fun going on the track, though? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you've you've, you've done all this. You uh, lived a full lifetime in many different oh, things. Yeah. You know. Uh, jumping out of good airplanes, you know, you, <laughs> you, know, you rode a scooter as a pre, as a young teenager. Yeah. Uh, you uh, you did a lot of things, but you you you've also set a good example for for a lot of other women out there in motorsports, and just to you know just to go do it. Well, I hope so. And uh, and it's you know we still we have a lot you know it's, it's really kind of fun now to watch NHRA when we actually we actually have the the Pruitts and, and the Forces and, mm -hmm. and the, you know, mm -hmm. and all the different, you know, oh, yeah. Alex, the, the, the jury, the, the, I mean, and they're all good drivers. I mean, they're, 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 they're not there because of, the, of their gender. They're there because no. they can drive the car. And because they have money. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, there's some, and they there's have some, backing, there's yeah. some men that can't drive that have money there too, unfortunately. But, you yeah, know. not too many though anymore because yeah. it is so expensive. Yep. And so I think that's, you know, I, we were talking earlier and I think it's a sport of millions now, and and that changed from when these guys started. I mean, it, and that, yeah, it's hard to tell whether that's good, or bad. It just is. Is what it is. Mm -hmm. That's why the nostalgia stuff's a lot of fun to watch. Funny Car Cast is off the hook. Mm -hmm. uh, this un unbelievable the amount of uh, fans that the, the that it draws. The, mm -hmm. They had the. The funny car cast in Texas this year, where they had they were fast. some odd cars, sixty-eight cars, yeah. something like that. And yeah, it's just it's unbelievable. So the passion's still there, and you mm -hmm. still have the passion. Yeah. The when, we, when we gonna see you racing again? Um, we're gonna test. We've okay. been working on the altered because it's a little bit of a different kind of car, and um, different team. We lost a team member a few weeks ago, and that was hard on, especially John and Jim, um, because they'd known him for so long. Um, so we're going to go down there and see what we can do. Johnny's helped uh, John in terms of changing some things in the car. We'll see. I, I like it. It's, um, it's very different with seeing the flames because as soon as you lose a, as soon as you lose a, um, a hole, you know it because of the flame. It's kind of cool. I, that makes it easier. Uh, the birthday candles are all on for you. Yeah. You know, when they're all on, that's a good thing. Yeah, it is. They're um, fun to drive. Paula, it's... You know, you, you've, you've got such a fantastic story. We appreciate you coming here sharing oh, this thank with you. us today. Uh, we're glad that you've uh, pretty much made <laughs> Arizona a, a place you come back to and you're, yeah. you're here and we consider you one of our Arizona drag racing legends. Thank you. Thank you so That's much for being very here. Very kind of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.